everyone, it's Jordan Robertson with Benzinga, and joining me today is Deborah Nitka, Senior Manager, and Adanya Chamberlain, Manager both in Cybersecurity, Technology Risk, and Privacy of Global Consulting Solutions at Cone Resnick. Thanks so much for being here. How are you guys today? Great. Excited to be here talking about this. We're fine. Wonderful. Now, Adanya, to kick things off, can you give us an overview of the company? Yeah, Cone Resnick is uh, one of the uh, bigger tax audit accounting consulting firm. And uh, we also have a cybersecurity practice group, which uh, Deborah and myself belong. So we are out there uh, consulting and advising clients in all industry verticals and also in government and all in private. And as part of uh, what Deborah and myself do in the cybersecurity technology risk and privacy group, we're there to advise clients on how to secure their env environments have a very healthy and robust cybersecurity posture. We're also looking into their privacy issues and concerns, understand what their business needs and drivers are, and how they can be successful in the markets while maintaining the confidentiality, integrity, and of course, the availability of their data sets. So in a nutshell, that's what uh, Cone Resnick does. And Deborah, switching over to you, what problems and dangers are there in this rapid adoption? Oh, rapid adoption is are the key words right there. Uh, AI is not new. Generative AI is really uh, biggest player on the scene right now. And companies are moving fast. They've got to move fast in order to adopt it, in order to stay competitive. But there really are material risks to a business. And the business really has to be ready to address what they are. And companies, you better be ready for a marathon. This is not a sprint. This is not set it and forget it. Um, this is something that companies need to take seriously, make sure they have the right governance in place. There's got to be tone at the top, executive support making sure not just from a business use case readiness, but also to make sure that from a cybersecurity, that the information that you've got being used in these large models um, are being, are being, is being done so with the appropriate controls in place, making sure that the personal information that you might be using around your customer base, especially if it's sensitive uh, information, such as children's information, health information, that all that's being done appropriately and, and lawfully. Absolutely. And Adanya, how quickly is AI being integrated into companies? What will this market look like in, let's say, five years? Oh, great. So, uh, as you know, every company is looking to gain that competitive edge in the marketplace. So the rapid adoption of AI started way back in November of last year. And just a little fun fact, uh, one of the technology that was rapidly adopted was the TikTok. We had about 7 million users. Uh, that signed on to TikTok within seven months, but generative AI was able to match that number within one month. So that tells you the massive appeal and the need to adopt AI in private lives and business environments. So we see this rapid increase in the use of the AI. It's a new environment, new technology, but in five years, we put the potentials will be great and enormous. It's going to impact a great deal of things that we do in business and in our lives. Of course. And Deborah, how can Cone Resnick help a company mitigate risk in AI? That's a really good question. One that we're getting quite frequently. Our practice in particular is beautifully, beautifully positioned uh, in that way. Our practice really, as Adani mentioned earlier, uh, really focuses on helping uh, organizations understand their cybersecurity risk exposure, the way the technology exposes their, their environment to risk, but also from a privacy perspective, we really focus on helping companies to operationalize what privacy means in their environment. So as you're going through, as you're creating those RFPs, as you're making selections around what those uh, AI technologies might look like in your uh, ecosystem, what we're able to help you really do is think through that risk exposure. Think through how might you position AI within your business? How might you want to carve out a segmented area of your network to make sure that your AI tool only really can, can function within that boundary? How are you training your people to be able to know the who, what, where, when, and why of using artificial intelligence, making sure that your people are, are your first line of defense, that they're only working where they should be working within your environment, that they're not uh, overexposing uh, any of your information. We can help from a perspective of making sure you've got the right data governance in place, what information can and cannot be used, how how does that, that data set need to be anonymized uh, before it can be used? Making sure that your development 
uh, your, your development team is, is going through secure coding practices and making sure that if they are, and, and I'll caveat this, most of the, uh, the AI related tech today that can be used by organizations is open source code. It's, this is code that is available to anybody and can be, um, can be compromised without knowledge of, of those using it. Uh, and so we're able to help put all of this, all of these programs in place, really help, help businesses understand what are you trying to get out of your AI? Are you, are you making the right selection of vendor choices? Are the choices that you're selecting, are they enterprise ready um, technologies that are out there? Do you have the right governance in place? Are you, have, your, have your people been trained um, the right way? Are you managing those third party vendors uh, in a way that is, is mitigating any additional risk? Great points there, Deborah. And last question and hot take, are there any regulations you hope to see in regard to AI? All of them. <laughs> we joke around, but you know, so, you know, in broad strokes, most of what we're seeing today come to fruition around uh, regulatory considerations with AI have very common themes. So looking at are the, the AI tools that are being used uh, being leveraged to make uh, broad decisions about personal information? Are those choices appropriate? Are they biased choices? What is the mechanism by which uh, organ third party organizations that are conducting these uh, either studies or, or developing large language models? Uh, providing to businesses uh, commercial tools, uh, what, what are their security posture, right? What obligations do those businesses have to secure both the ecosystem in which uh, information is being assessed as well as the information itself? What obligations do businesses have? What, what are the expectations of companies and their executive teams to make sure that they are understanding the risk and, and the risk exposure to the average person. So, all, you know, all, all of these pieces really go into most of what we're seeing, you know, out there. So I, I jokingly tongue in cheek say that, you know, we hope all of them come, come to fruition, right? But we, we do hope that it's done in a way that, it, that is still business protective, but business supportive as well. Yes, absolutely. Well, that's all I have for today. Thank you both so much for being here and I hope to see you back real soon. Thanks for having us on. All right. Thank you.